the long-awaited video seven months with no alcohol will i ever drink again what am i missing out on my intention was not to do seven months what benefits have you noticed so far why does the sun make you want to grab a cider if it's something that will make me never not drink again it's that sometimes you like people because you're drinking it was hard i'm not gonna lie let's get drunk <laughs> the biggest negative I have noticed is okay, so maybe ask yourself could i be this level of mary in this environment without the alcohol <laughs> hi everyone welcome or welcome back to my youtube channel if you're returning what's up if you're new hello and welcome it is your girl aggie and on this channel i bring you my two passions which are all things wellness all things dance sprinkled with little bits and vlogs of life so the long-awaited video. This video is going to be about my seven months of alcohol-free. By the time I post this, it might already be eight months, but I don't feel like there's gonna be such a big difference in the things that I've learned from seven months right now being alcohol-free. Seven months with no alcohol, and for people who ask whether it is a sip, whether I've even had a little bit, one glass, nothing, I have not had any form of alcohol for the time I'm filming this for seven months. We don't already follow me on instagram just to do that now i started sharing parts of the journey when i did start and people wanted more information people wanted to sit down so that's what i am doing i did a question box about what questions people wanted me to answer i'm already going to format it in a way that I'm going to cover some of the questions that I know people would like to know in general. Even if you don't follow me on Instagram and you just came across this video, I will cover pretty much what I know you want to know. However, I still did put a question box just in case people had very specific questions, maybe to my journey, and just in case there's questions that I might not think about. So that's what I did. I'm gonna basically go through the journey of it as I'm adding in the questions you lot asked. So I'm gonna do it in a question answer way. Some of the questions are from me, because I know you wanna know, and some questions are specifically from people that sent them in. There were loads of the same questions, and I'll specify which ones were like loads and loads of the same, but that's kind of how this is going to work. And I'm going to answer the million dollar question. Will I ever drink again? Stay tuned, you definitely don't wanna miss this. Before I start, if you're not subscribed, it literally takes one second of your day to subscribe. It really helps this channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you are liking it as you go along. Let's see you know what kind of content you like. If you have any comments of the, maybe your journey, your um, what you're realizing about your relationship with alcohol, any more questions I didn't cover in this video, definitely put them in the comment box and let's start a discussion. Also, just a disclaimer before I even start, this video is not in any way to judge anyone that does drink. I'm 29, I literally drank for 20 years of my life so I know why people drink that's not gonna be this video of like oh my god I don't understand why people I completely understand why people drink because I drank <laughs> so this video is just for me to share my journey with you it might make someone think it might not it might just be an interesting video you watch today as you're drinking a glass of wine that's okay but I remember someone shared their journey I'm gonna share about why I stopped but the thing that broke the camel's back was someone sharing their journey about why they stopped and I completely stopped the next day this could be a seed for someone or it could not but this is just a space to just speak about this i want to share this with you and i always say on this channel anything that has helped me i would love to share with you and maybe it could help you too maybe not you could see this and send it to someone who's been telling you that they're kind of thinking of not drinking and that could help them so it is not anything to do with judging anybody that does drink and the choices they make with their lives because it's your life and you get to make the choices that you make as do i so I just wanted to put that little disclaimer, let's get into it. First question, how would you describe your relationship with alcohol before you quit? This is a great question because this links in with why did you stop? My relationship with alcohol, I feel like it went through stages. So I had my first drink when, I don't know, I was like 14, you know, when you'd like go to like a house party and get those little vodkas and you know, just like down it before you go inside. But I never drank like regularly at all. I just had like little introductions and things with alcohol. The older I got, when I was probably like 18, 19, I was going clubbing, me and Abby, ah! going clubbing. Um, That was definitely more like binging, like, you know, every weekend we'll be drinking. And that's when your body can just bounce back. So you're doing Thursday, Friday, Saturday, boom, next, go to college, next weekend, boom, boom, boom. So that was fun. <laughs> 
Those days were literally so fun every time I think about them. Then I went and worked on a cruise ship, which I would say is when I became more of a social drinker. Before that, I would only drink when I'm going out for a nightclub. That's the best way to put it. Then I went on, I worked on a ship for seven months and people drank more casually. So after a show, they would, you know, a few times a week, they want to, you know, just go one, hit one for the road or, you know, have a bit, it's a bit more casual. And I never was, I never had a relationship with alcohol like that, like for it to be like a casual after a long day or I never seen it. I just seen it as, ah, let's get drunk. <laughs> But then naturally, I just became a bit more like, oh, okay, I'll have one. That was a really long show. That was a really long day. I'll have one here on our days of daytime drinking. That's when I think I started daytime drinking, apart from the occasional carnival before the ship. So then I came back and I went on tour. And I think that element of like, oh, that was a good show. Cheers. There became more times where I could have a drink. And all of this wasn't drinking to get drunk. It could literally be, oh, let's have a glass of wine just to de-stress after we've had like a really long show or we have a day off tomorrow let's you know party and like kind of get drunk but there was that hint of oh casual just one here one there not getting drunk every time i drink that's the distinction that i made from binge drinking to just then casually drinking and i found that i stopped getting drunk as much when i started doing the more casual thing then covid happened and covid what did we all do what did we all do during covid we drank we drank in the day we drank in the night we all went on facetime and house party i don't know if you remember that app and everyone just kind of just casually drank a lot more of course low keys but because we're all dealing with like a crisis and a pandemic of the nation but that definitely was much more like oh casual like it is nothing like just having one is nothing <laughs> again it was never to get drunk then i moved to london and when i moved to london i would say the amount of times i got drunk honestly decreased so much i think it would be like birthdays or a special night out it would never be honestly i could go months and months without being drunk but then on the flip side of that i was then just much more casual so my relationship um with drinking before I quit was just a much more casual it was the almost the glamorized way of drinking like oh my god it's such a long let me have a hot bath with a wine oh let's go for two for one cocktails oh it's been such a long day let me have you know it just became a habit it became a habit that I actually wasn't realizing was not a good habit to have because equally even if you have a glass of wine or two that's still going to affect you in some way the next day whether you realize it or not and also to add I've never been the like the girl who's getting so drunk being taken home people don't even realize when I'm drunk people think I'm drunk now like psh, for real like let's be for real some of my friends were even like shocked that I would even stop drinking but again it's an internal journey and I'm someone who's very honest with themselves so I'm like mm, this is getting a bit too far even if it's not looking to the world like oh my god you know you need to stop now intervention Aggie. no it was never that but it was like you know what aren't these the habits that then become that like Surely if you're casually drinking, then you just then everyday drink and then you just then I can't wake up with that one. I don't know. I just felt like, mm, should we just like, like cut this where it is now so that you just don't get to that. This links into what made me stop drinking. So I would say there, it was kind of like a long time coming because when I moved to London about a year and a half ago, London is very socially and casually of a drinking place like when someone comes over there's alcohol when someone it's all that i think in the back of my head i used to just be like mm, why am i doing this seeds were being planted but i wasn't doing anything about it i would just carry on drinking and mom my mom and my stepdad tim they don't drink and i've i've seen over the years how that has just increase their well-being just increase their quality of life and i think my brain used to say eventually i'll stop eventually when i'm older i will stop drinking so there were seeds that were in my head about mm, like is drinking like should i really be drinking like what good does it do to my life but those were just seeds they didn't grow okay i was still taking shots i was still there like uh, 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 bookie, bookie, boo. <laughs> Like the seeds did not grow, they just were planted. Then I went to Kenya last year, November to December 2022. And I was there for 40 days, actually 40 days or 40 nights, like for real. And I drank so much, cause there's something about holiday, 
like something about like I don't know what what it is that in Kenya gosh oof, all my Kenyan babes I know hey but you lot whoa another league I drank so much every other day and it wasn't get drinking to get drunk like I keep saying it was just like having a drink and when I came back and then it was Christmas and it was just a lot it felt like it was just a lot i was like i need to have a detox like i need to stop for a bit this just just long i just i'm not into this now this the plant is growing a bit like it it was growing like i was at there no like oh no then i had a conversation with marley marley is a dancer in london she's um from canada but she moved here to pursue her dream and we were in a setting it wasn't just us two we were with other people we just finished like a studio session but we went and got food after and naturally a lot of us ordered a glass of wine because we had like a really good studio session i noticed she ordered water and i asked oh you're not drinking and she said i don't drink i literally physically turned my entire body to her and i was like go tell me everything you know just tell me everything i've asked her if i can share a part of her story and she said it's okay she stopped drinking four years ago because she was drinking like more and she said there's no way i'm gonna focus on my career and be doing this so she went completely cold turkey and so then she just started talking about the benefits she talking about what is done for her with her dance career she just starts talking about so many things that for me the thing that was like about it was she is my age she is in the career i'm in and she doesn't drink that felt so close to me where sometimes when you know when you think about when i think of my mom and now she's older you know it just feels there isn't that exact relatability with where i am at in my life this was someone that we danced together i stopped the next day i spoke to her on sunday february the 5th february the 6th i said nah i'm done and I remember thinking, Marley, I, I, I thought of what I think of her in general, like within the industry. Marley is always on it. She's always on it. She's always ready. She's always just like, boom, like ready. And I said, is that partly why? She's like, yeah, because every day is productive. I don't, when I'm going to class, there's never a day I'm hanging. I'm just good. That's what I means she's not tired. She's a human. I get that. But there's an element that I was like, I understand why there's an elevation, especially in your career and just how you are or how I see you because you don't have alcohol. So she's been like great in this journey just to have someone to speak to, especially someone who's my age and does what I do. So anyway, I stopped February 6th, which leads me to my third question. How did I feel in the beginning? Was it hard? Was it difficult? Now in the beginning, it was hard. I'm not gonna lie, it was hard. And what's harder is because I was casually drinking. As opposed to if I binged only when I went on nights out like I used to when I was younger, then I would only have to deal with that in the nights out. I had written a list of the things that I associated with drinking alcohol so that I'm conscious of what's happening with my mind when maybe I'm feeling tempted. It's because I have correlated this with this. So in the beginning, I feel like, I mean, the first week was probably fine, but like when it got to like, I don't know, 15, 18, 20, 30 days that bit was the hardest bit because I was not presented with the situations in which I associated drinking with now if you're someone who maybe is curious or maybe wants to kind of go on this journey and finding it hard write that list so that you can consciously understand why it's hard you're human we're creatures of habit so for example I remember having a really long day I had two auditions I had um, and I got cut from both of them I had a class it was a really long day my brain was like ding ding glass of wine please you know I'm like really tired and I deserve it I was like oh why would I drink now because I'd associated long day you did really well well done with alcohol so it's those moments I found hard for me to just make a new habit. No, you're going to stretch, you're going to have a tea and you're going to go to bed. The turning point for me was when I was presented with like a situation that I could not even fathom not drinking at. I went to one of my friend's birthday and it was a sit down dinner. I only knew probably like two, three people there and there was like 18 people. It was a restaurant which you can bring alcohol in. I didn't even know you could do that. So there were 18, um, 18 of us 
alcohol everywhere it was a dinner and then they were gonna go out after i think that was day i don't know 20 something and i sat there for the first 20 minutes before we could order our food everyone was we're calling it table tequila so everyone was going around taking shots drinking the birthday girl was drunk it was great they were having a good time i could just feel my brain being like you've never been in your adult life in a situation like this and not drunk even at least even if it's not one or if you're not on antibiotics <laughs> And I could feel my brain being, oh my gosh, oof, gosh, like, I want to drink, you know, I want to drink. And I'll be like, okay, that's fine. Why do you want to drink? What do you think drinking is going to do for you? This is what I was doing when I was finding it hard. I was speaking to myself because I knew I was, there was a part of me that was having to reprogram my brain. So I was like, speak to yourself. Don't ignore yourself because you're just going to drink and that's it. And then you're just gonna be back to here and um i was like oh you know because i'm just so used to it then i said you might just need sugar so i ordered a lemonade i ordered a lemonade and i was like oh i'm fine and then it's when i got past that first 20 minutes i then now didn't want to drink it was almost like the bit of like oh my god oh my god what am i what am i missing out on then when that passes the desire goes because you don't actually need it you just think you do so you need to fight that part that monkey brain of yours that is telling you you need to when you actually don't we ended up having a good night and when i overcame that and then the next day it was a sunday 9 a.m i was having my green smoothie feeling fresh as the daisy i said to myself and i remember not drinking is actually a form of self-love that now feels like loving myself more than when i do drink that turning point made it so much easier before it just became natural to me so yes it was hard in the beginning and um there were times where i'd be like oh why would you drink now oh is it because you don't want to feel what you're feeling when you like it's like when you really deep it when you really deep why you want to drink now there's some moments where it's like oh actually alcohol is cute alcohol does enhance your feelings it's not that it's a bad thing but because of how glorified it is sometimes you don't even realize why you are drinking so maybe ask yourself why do i drink it could just be because it feels good it could just be because of the positive side of it you know like oh merry but beneath that it could be well this is the only thing that makes me feel merry could i be this level of merry in this environment without the alcohol it's just it really made me just ask myself deeper questions do I need it? Why do I feel like I need it in this environment and not in that environment? Why do I feel I need it more on this day than that day? Questions, curiosity, be open for deep answers to come. I don't want to feel what I'm feeling. That's a tough pill to swallow. So now we're going to sit here and you're going to feel it instead of cover it up with some form of alcohol. Which app did you use? So I used the Crossout app and it was a really, really good um accountability for me because when i do a day i would literally run to the app and be like yes i did this now i'm closer to 30 days now i'm closer to this and especially when i did a day that was hard or a day where i went out with like friends and like that would be difficult for me i did it i would be like oh my god yeah i did it and it just makes you feel like it's a game so it's called the cross out app that would definitely help you in the beginning. What was your intention with not drinking in the first place? Funny enough, I wasn't like, oh, I'm quitting drinking. I was like, I need a break. Let me do three months. Firstly, let me do the whole of February. And then I was even saying, oh, okay, maybe I'll just do it on bigger occasions. So I was, there was a concert com coming up, a Dex Adapts concert coming up. There was Beyonce coming up in May. I was like, I'm not not drinking for that. Oh my gosh, like, yeah, let me, like, I'm just doing it for a little bit. So by the way, this, the intention wasn't this my intention was not to do seven months my intention was to do a month but when i felt all the benefits i felt i said do another see what happens with two three four five six oh seven hello <laughs> that's what that intention was this question was asked quite a bit and i can't wait to talk about this because this is something i just would not have even pictured have you noticed the difference in the level of your sweet tooth pre and post alcohol yes i have oh my gosh in the beginning i was craving sugar so much i had to look it up because i was like i don't understand what's going on usually when you stop something that is giving you a dopamine hit your brain naturally looks for another but they said in the beginning if you're like trying to do like a whole detox from it eat the sugar eat the sugar so when i wanted to go buy sweets i went and bought sweets because that's better but then I was like trying to be careful that I now didn't just replace, you know, like when I go out or I have a long day, I just don't replace it with sugar. But in the beginning, I definitely was much more like, okay, that's fine. If you want to eat sweets, eat sweets. 
just don't drink wine like that's just all you're doing now as time has gone on the sweet tooth has like lessened but it's definitely still much more than it was before but before i never used to have one really like i'm not that like sweet kind of girl i definitely am i am more now but it just feels it's just much more controlled but i definitely noticed a peak in that in the beginning what benefits have you noticed so far oh my girl i can talk about this all day firstly sleep sleep hold on am i the only one please let me know in the comments did you think that alcohol made you sleep better because i did like you know when you you can't sleep and you think oh let me just like let me unwind with wine because wine will make me groggy and sleep no so i found out alcohol does not actually let you go into like in your deepest REM sleep I think it is no it doesn't so when I completely um, removed alcohol from my like routine oh my gosh the depth of sleep I get the actual quality of sleep is so deep it mm, that is that's the first thing I noticed I was like I'm sleeping like a child like so so deep so I sleep even better than I slept before and especially if I've had a long day and I just oh yeah that sleep is number one. Two, I've noticed my skin. My skin is better. Because of being on this journey, I've looked at more information about alcohol and the impact it has on our brain, on our body. Even if you have two glasses of wine and don't drink again for like three days, that still is taking time to come out of your system. So I had more understanding of what was happening. So then when I'm seeing like my skin change or um, I'm feeling like, like a deeper cleanse, I'm then looking it up to see what the actual science of that is. Now, I don't want to go into the science element of it there's so many podcasts i can actually put, put you uh podcasts below for you to understand just more the effects of alcohol but i know definitely notice my skin i notice my body change now i was toned before but there's like um there's an like extra weight that i think is stored with the sugar of alcohol because it just stays in your body i notice a drastic change in that my abs are abbing much more than they used to ab and it's not that i'm doing any more it's just that now my body's just sticking it just sticks it feels like so definitely notice that one of the other biggest one is emotional regulation again alcohol is a depressant but you do get that dopamine hit so that's why you know it's like i'm fine i'm fine i'm so drunk and then the next day you feel like this what i noticed is the state of where i would just be regulated like i keep saying i know i didn't drink every day and probably people would look at me and think ads like you don't even drink you know like i get that but even if you're having just a glass of wine, that still has an impact. So whether you notice it or not, when that's removed, something changes, which is what I notice. I would not say I'm a not regulated person, emotionally especially, but you don't realize what's happening underneath the scene from the getting drunk you did four days ago because of what that's doing to your brain and your emotions. But what it feels like is just, I'm regulated which means I can feel what I'm feeling all the time. It feels like a baby, actually. If I'm sad and I cry, I'll cry, then 10 minutes later, I'm laughing. Or now I'll, I'll be frustrated, then I'll just be inspired. It feels like I can go with every emotion. You know alcohol being a depressant, it almost puts you down, especially when you're having a hangover. You can't access other emotions, even if you want to even if something happens that you you know you got really good news when you're hanging you can't access that so you're not as regulated so regulation is not that i don't feel bad it just means i just feel what i feel and i move on to the next thing so even dealing with things emotionally it feels like there's nothing that I'm, i don't feel stuck in things it just feels like this is what's happening and it can happen for a long time i can be upset for or oh, maybe going through something for a week that's fine but it just feels like that's all that's happening there's no other undertone of like heaviness so yes emotional regulation for sure another benefit experiences like i said i was intending on you know that dexter daps concert which would have been like i don't know probably a month in or two months in i was like yeah i'll definitely drink to that the more i didn't drink the more i said why would i drink and surely the thing that is a big experience is the one i shouldn't drink at so that i can feel it that was my first concert sober and oh my gosh like i'm telling you i could feel goosebumps i didn't realize let me know but you don't feel goosebumps when you're drunk so scientifically that like you have a pineal gland and alcohol kind of blocks it 
so you you feel things differently but you don't feel things how you would feel when you're sober so i was getting so many goosebumps and i was like oh my god i never get this when i'm drunk because there's like a glaze over of your experience even though you think you're experiencing it more there's actually like a coat but when you're actually seeing it with all your senses wow that concert was amazing so then i thought actually i don't want to save the, the drinking for special occasions these are the occasions i actually want to try and not do it and see what they feel like so overall i've had experiences i went to beyonce's concert and didn't drink i feel like i got every second of that concert it was a very important concert for me to go to and then i didn't get any like hangovers the next day for me to then forget what i felt it was like that feeling stayed with me for so long because there was nothing that was enhancing or removing it it felt what it felt like but overall i feel like there's just a more a better well-being like my life feels better just in general every day can be productive and if it's not and i want to have a bad day that bad day becomes a bad day it doesn't become i'm having a bad day because i drank or because i went out it's because i want rest so i get to enjoy bad days because i'm just enjoying them so it feels like i'm just more present in my life it feels like overall there's just a better feeling because i'm being me and i'm starting to discover what i like and don't like sometimes you like people because you're drinking do you even like them do you even like doing this do you like going out sometimes you don't know but alcohol makes everything look cute makes people look cuter too <laughs> so i feel like i'm even rediscovering who i am what i like and what i don't like because of this journey any negatives of being alcohol free the biggest negative i have noticed is when i'm going on a night out i have only my body energy to survive <laughs> that sounds dramatic but it's a real thing i mean i could have a red bull sometimes red bull does help but literally it's you and you so you feel everything if you didn't eat earlier you are not having a good time if you didn't sleep properly last night you're not having a good time if your feet are hurting you're not having a good time those things when you drink and i know you can all vouch for this you forget you're hungry you forget you are tired you forget your feet are hurting you basically a lot can be taken care of when you're drinking and um how many of us have when you're about to go out and you're tired take a shot amka wake up you're up and that that does something but when you're functioning on just you girl that is hard out here i remember when i went to carnival this year i said to myself this is the one place i genuinely see why i would drink oh my gosh firstly walking twenty thousand steps when you're drunk don't feel a thing never felt a thing ever why were my feet hurting so much my back my lower back was aching. I was hungry. I didn't even know where you buy food at Carnival. This is Bristol Carnival, by the way, when I used to drink because I don't think about food. See, the drink is the food. <laughs> so I was, oh my God, I need to go get food. I had to get food. I needed to drink water. I actually needed to give my body what it needed to continue going. Because when you're not drinking, your body needs things to keep going. Whereas alcohol, we just, we use alcohol to keep it going. So that's a negative. I feel everything. If I'm tired, I'm tired. I'm tired. I want to go home. Like, it's just that real. It's just that serious. The push through is different. Ironically, I do feel I have more energy in my life, but this is specifically for nights out and um, events that are very long. It's just different. But I would say in my everyday life, I do have more energy because I do feel like my body has more to keep going. But then if I do that and then I have to push through a night out, I can do that, but it means everything needs to be good. The music needs to be good, and the who I'm with needs to be good, and the event needs to be good. Because usually, all those things don't matter. When you're drunk, doesn't drum and bass sound cute? <laughs> now it's like, oh my God, like, I don't like this. So that's the negative okay this was asked a lot do you still go out as i've just kind of explained i do go out but do you still go out how do you handle not drinking in social settings how do you deal with fomo someone even asked do you still hang about with the friends that drink a lot let now now let's talk about the environment and how i'm how i've now handled not drinking around people who are drinking and things like that i'm really glad i did this i started doing this journey even though it wasn't intentional to do it this long in February because that was kind of still winter so that my body kind of got used to not drinking before the sun came out that was another thing on my list sun why does the sun make you want to grab a cider 
I mean, people who live in Kenya, you have the sun all the time, so I don't know if you relate, but England especially, why does the sun just make you wanna go grab speakers, put music on and just get a drink? For me anyway. So by the time it was summer or <laughs> England summer, I had already established I actually am really enjoying life without alcohol. So I had already gotten over my own stuff before I had so much social, being in social settings, so many social events and things like that. Now I feel fine. Now I feel normal because I've already gotten to the bottom of why would I, why do I feel like I need to. I would say, did I experience FOMO? I wouldn't say I've experienced FOMO because of who I am in those settings with and without alcohol. Literally, like I say, people think I'm drunk anyway, like, oh, I'm, I want something. <laughs> so I didn't ever need alcohol for social settings, 90% of the time. There is the odd 10 where it's like, let's say you're gonna be walking in somewhere or you've never been, maybe you wanna take a shot, I get that. But majority for me, I didn't ever need alcohol. I just liked drinking. So then I don't feel like, oh my God, I, I can't be myself without alcohol. I'm already me. I never had to overcome that element. So because of that, I'm just me. Someone could come in and think, oh, we're all drinking because I'm still hyper, I'm still social, I'm still this. I'm just not doing that with alcohol in my system. I know a lot of people, social anxiety is real and sometimes drinking will help them through that. So then that will be a very different journey of you experiencing FOMO, you experiencing like you're not feeling like yourself. And I think that's something you'd have to like really look into. But for me, it was just like, yeah, well, I'm not drinking. Now, what helped me is finding substitutes. Alcohol-free drinks, firstly, oh my gosh, on Saturday, I didn't know this, but there's alcohol-free cider, Copperberg, the like nicest cider ever. They have alcohol free version which tastes literally exactly the same. There's a Nozeco which is um, a Prosecco that is alcohol free. Literally tastes so good. Then I discovered elderflower and soda water. That's nothing to do with like alcohol free but it's so refreshing that you're like oh my god why would I drink alcohol? So I equally then just have sub substitutes. Especially when I started going back into social settings I was like okay I'm gonna need to help myself. Help yourself, help yourself. Help me help you. So I would, um, you know, I'd put it on my Instagram, my little elderflower, you know, feel good. I'll put it in a wine glass, you know, just to be in the vibe so that I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything because I'm not. I'm actually not. So I feel like that's how I've dealt with it. If there's any tempting, it would only ever be the bit before. Never in the night, like I was saying in that dinner, the 20 minutes, or you know, when people are getting ready and you're seeing them drink. If there's anything, it would be there. But because I will then now have like a cute little drink, I'm still drinking. Technically, I'm not drinking water, I'm still enjoying myself, so then that has definitely helped. I then had this year my first sober birthday in so long, because I think birthdays are just a time where everyone just gets drunk, really. And firstly, have you ever had a sober birthday question? I know some people don't drink as much as I did, so I get that this might not be like, some of you might be like, oh, wow, you did drink a lot, so I get it. But some of you might drink more. So ask yourself if you've ever had a sober birthday and how that was in comparison to the ones where you did drink. I've always loved my birthdays. I have my most amazing friends. I have like, I share it on my Instagram. Again, if you're not following, go on my Instagram. And I um, was like, no, this year I want to, I just want to experience a sober birthday. Funnily enough, remember I wasn't planning this, my birthday on the 6th of August was exactly six months since I stopped drinking because I stopped in February 6th. Just randomly, random coincidence. And that felt like such a big milestone to me. And I remember thinking, I just want to feel all the love. I don't want the love to be enhanced by alcohol. I don't want the love to then be dampened the next day because I drank alcohol and now I'm recovering. I just wanted to feel everything that was there. And honestly, it was one of the best birthdays I have ever had. It was very monumental in many ways. Like personally, there was a lot, there was a big shift that happened with me that my birthday came like almost just in time for. But experiencing that sober, was fantastic i didn't feel for more and to answer the question about my friends like i get why people drink i'm not here being like everyone should stop drinking no it's a very personal journey and it's a journey that you should do in your by yourself in your own time so i get why people drink so all my friends oh my god i will carry you home if anything i can now be designated driver like i will now help you so I have no problem whatsoever with anyone, especially my friends drinking, because I get why you drink. It's very fine. When we went for my mom's birthday, I was with her, Tim, and a friend of hers who doesn't drink. That was the first time I've been in a setting of two or more people that aren't drinking. Did that change the setting and the feel? 100%. But does that mean that if they were all drinking, that would have removed anything? No. So 
yeah, I'm sure it's easier to be around people who aren't doing what you're doing, but that doesn't remove anything by me being around people who are. And then my friends, I love them so much. I will hold your hair as you throw up. So I still hang around with my friends. There's nothing that has changed in terms of that. Another thing about how I am in general that has made it fine to be in social settings, I've never struggled from peer pressure. Now, when I did drink, I... Uh, I didn't mind peer pressure in the sense that, you know, oh my god, like I said I'm not drinking but someone said here's some shots, of course I'll do it. So technically that's peer pressure but actually I was fine with drinking. But when I don't want to do something, peer pressure cannot touch me. I'm not that person who's like, oh my god I really need to go here. I don't know, like I need to do this tomorrow morning and someone's like, oh no let's go on a night out and I'm like, yeah, no. Like I'm not gonna go, especially if, something, if it's something that's important. So peer pressure doesn't affect me. So that has handled a lot of why I'm okay in social settings. So if peer pressure does, then that's like another thing within another thing that you're gonna have to kind of look into. Do you miss drinking? <laughs> oh, sorry, I even forgot, I need to add this. Huge benefit, no hangover for seven months. If it's something that will make me never not drink again, it's that. That feeling when you open your eyes and you want it all to end. You want it all to end because you know you did a little too much, you drank a little too much, you just kept going a little too far, and now this day ahead is going to be torturous. Or if you have something coming, like an important thing coming, and then you drink and now you're suffering. That, if there's anything that will keep me, so sorry, that's a benefit I didn't state earlier. But coming back to this, do I miss drinking? I don't miss drinking because of what drinking came with. I can't separate the two. If there's anything I miss, like I keep saying, is that bit before when you're just tipsy, when it just hits and you're like, oh, like inhibitions. If there's anything, it's that. But because I know what comes with drinking after feeling what not drinking feels like, I don't miss it. Because what am I missing? Pain and just feeling like shit the next day. Or even if it's one or two, like, I don't know. Oh, I'm tired thinking about it. I don't feel like it's worth it. Now that I'm on the other side, I don't. So I don't miss drinking because of what it came with. Someone said, how do you do it? I'm struggling with this and I think I need help. There's a difference between alcohol-free and sober. Sober is for people who had an, like an alcohol dependency, an actual problem, they were alcoholics. That's when they refer to it as I'm now like seven years sober, but I'm alcohol-free. So I chose to not have alcohol. Alcohol was not affecting my life or relationships in negative ways i just wanted to go on this journey it does not mean it's not hard but those two are different so if you feel like you need help because you're very dependent i would say seek some help maybe seek some professional help some professional advice from people who have become sober especially if you feel like it's such a struggle to stop if you just mean i'm struggling to become alcohol free which can also be valid too because i had some struggles i would say try and figure out why you want to even go on this journey in the first place why do you want to be alcohol free and if you know why write down the things that are stopping you is it peer pressure are you the kind of person who when someone says just take a shot and you just do it even though you know you want to stop then look into that I keep saying it's such, a, such a personal journey if you drink to you know if you drink your pain away then that's a whole other thing if you just drink to not feel you if you it just depends so much so ask yourself some of the questions that i've spoken about in this video write that list and then go from there and see why you're struggling really see why you're struggling because you you're the only person who will know why and be honest with yourself and now i know i've covered a lot the million dollar question will you ever drink again the reason i'm not answering that is because i don't want to make a decision that i will feel guilty about doing for example if i say yeah i'm never going to drink again what if one day i want to i don't want to put pressure on my future self because right now I'm feeling good without drinking. Equally on the other side, yeah, I am gonna drink again after, I don't know, maybe a few years. I don't wanna then put pressure on that version of me to drink if I'm actually fine without drinking. So this is what I keep saying when someone asks me that. I'm not saying that I would never not drink alcohol again, but so far I have not found a reason to go back to drinking. That is my answer. If I do find a reason to go back to drinking, maybe I will, but Every time I've thought, oh my God, you know, could you drink there? You know, maybe like even on your wedding day, do you want to drink? But I'm like, on oh, my wedding day, 
surely I want to be the most present I've ever been. So there's not been a time where I'm like, okay, there you go. Apart from the carnival, sorry, when I said carnival, I see why I would drink here. This would make sense. Then maybe next year, why am I drinking carnival? Because I was like, actually, yeah, this is a place that makes sense. Maybe I'll be someone who only drinks at carnival, someone who only drinks here and there. So the answer is open because I'm not trying to close myself off by give myself some kind of identity even when i'm speaking to people i say i stopped drinking i don't say i i'm never going to drink alcohol there's a way i word it that helps me with my journey helps me with the kind of person i am because i don't like being limited and also i know people are so well meaning on dms and stuff but like let's say i put a nozeko up and i haven't written it's alcohol free they're like oh my god have you given up like have you stopped i'm allowed to drink right now if i want to yeah like i know it's coming from love and oh my god you've been doing so well but i can drink if i want to i just haven't found a reason to and i feel great without doing it so that question is long and it's open because i want to keep it like that anyway so far i don't see myself drinking but that's me speaking currently after seven months another thing i've noticed is that alcohol reeks when i was drinking i could not smell alcohol as much because i was around it even now when someone has had one drink i smell it I smell it so much or when like alcohol is near me I oh it's just like overbearing actually so I'm very sensitive to the smell of alcohol now it's like smoking if you're not a smoker when you get someone who's smoking and you f smell their breath and you just smell the smoke you just are not used to that so that's another addition but yes that is it I feel like that was a lengthy in-depth video of my journey so far please definitely let me know in the comments maybe if you're maybe thinking about not drinking i've had beautiful people in my um on my instagram dm saying that they've stopped because they've seen my journey and they just can't believe that i've done it some people are on like 64 days i remember shout out to you some people on three months five months if you need encouragement keep going if you're on day five and you're just like oh my god like i want to go out this weekend keep going and be curious who what is six months out of 50 years of your life be curious who could i be who could you be if you stopped drinking? How much more productive could you be? Who would you remove from your life when you now realize you don't like them now that you are alcohol free? So I just invite you to be curious. If you're not and you're happy with the amount you drink, how often you drink and it's not affecting like any parts of your life and you're fine, then that's completely fine too. But for anyone who is and if you need encouragement, literally, you're not missing out on anything when you don't drink and life could actually be better as I feel like it's better for me. And on a closing note, I am so proud of myself. I know in this day and age, in the glamorized world we live in of alcohol, I'm so proud of myself that I could do this for myself. This was for me. This is a love action to me. I'm so proud of you, Ags, because now I see alcohol more because I don't drink it. Like everywhere you go, there's alcohol. And I seen this quote that said, alcohol is the only substance you get questioned for not using. Like if someone was to come in on a train on literally a Friday afternoon and start sniffing cocaine, what would we all say? But if you have a gin, it's fine. So the world wants you to drink more than it doesn't want you to drink. But when you do, and you overcome just that almost hold it has on people and on yourself and on everyone and on society, you feel like you've genuinely accomplished something big. And I know I have, and I'm proud of myself, and it's a flex. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. Get in the comments, let's talk, let's discuss. I'm so open. Um, anything I've missed, I might make another milestone just to add. Um, but thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe and I will speak to you soon. Bye.